In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of what is a bank reconciliation and its purpose? So what is a bank reconciliation? It's going to be one of the major internal controls that we will have. And this is huge uh, when we're using an automated system because it's really only secondary to the double entry accounting system, 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 system. system itself. And if you're using an automated system, then it really will force you something like computer software or accounting software like QuickBooks or something like that. It will typically force you to be in balance. Check balance. But we also want to, so that's going to be one huge internal control. That being the double entry accounting system is one of our big checks against making errors. So uh, that's going to be a huge help. The next thing we want to do and the thing that really could take most uh, many small businesses to the next level and is a requirement of large businesses would be to do the bank reconciliation. And uh, the reason for that is that the bank reconciliation is going to really tie out uh, our information to a separate uh, third party source who is very reliable, that being the bank. So we can tie out all of our cash transactions to the bank. And because cash is involved in pretty much every cycle within our system, we're not just auditing cash then. Uh, and note that that's a huge key to understand because when we think of a bank reconciliation we might think well cash is so important and we have to reconcile cash that's true but as we reconcile cash we're also reconciling at least a component of every other system that deals with cash which is pretty much every system in the accounting process so it doesn't test timing all the time and total accuracy and timing uh, but it does uh, give some controls and testing over uh, the accounts receivable cycle the sales cycle the accounts payable cycle the payroll cycle so it's a huge uh, component that we want to put in place. So the bank reconciliation process, the way we will do this is typically the bank will issue a bank uh, statement monthly. And that's going to be a, a good way to do this. As we have online systems, we know we can check the balance anytime now. But uh, it's typically good to have a monthly system because what we need is a beginning balance, defined beginning balance and a defined ending balance that we can tie out to the bank statement and to our books and see what is the same and what is different. And that's literally all we are doing. We're trying to say if we did everything properly in our books and uh, deposited everything in the bank and wrote checks for everything from the bank, then our information should completely line up perfectly in a perfect world. But it's not a perfect world and it won't line up perfectly. And we'll have to figure out what exactly those differences are by finding those differences then we can really verify everything else that is in the system. So the bank statement, for example, if we had the month of November and we wanted to reconcile the month of November, we would have the bank statement listing the deposits and the checks for the month of November, listing the beginning balance as of the beginning of the month and the ending balance. We're going to compare that to our books where we're going to have the beginning balance for November and the ending balance. If we concentrate first on the ending balance, the November 30th, balance for the bank and the books, you would think it would be the same again in a perfect world, but almost never will it be the same because not necessarily because of errors, even if everything was perfect because of timing differences. And that's really what we want to get the bank reconciliation down to timing differences. Those having to do with outstanding checks and outstanding deposits, outstanding checks being items that we wrote as of the end of the time period which have not yet cleared the bank. The bank doesn't know about them yet. So therefore, they're going to have to be something that we are going to have to adjust for to get from the bank balance to our balance. We're also going to have the outstanding deposits where we made a deposit. We know the deposit was made, but it hasn't cleared the bank yet. And therefore, we're going to have to add that to the bank balance side. That's really going to be the essence of the, of the bank reconciliation once we're completed with it. And uh, once we can reconcile the bank uh, balance as of November 30th to our balance as of the end of the month, then we can be pretty certain that everything we have in our system is correct and verified by the third party. So the bank statement, although the reconciliation will help us to, to find errors on the bank side, that's really not the purpose of it. The purpose of it, uh, well, you know, that's one purpose of it, but <laughs> the main purpose of it is to uh, reconcile our side, really, to make sure that our books are, are correct by double checking the third party source, which is typically very accurate uh, about about what the transactions are. Now, then there's going to be the other side of the bank reconciliation process where 
we find things on the bank statement that we haven't recorded yet. For example, if there's outstanding, uh, uh, if we make, if we bought checks or something like that, if we had service charges from the bank, we wouldn't have recorded that. We wouldn't have known about them until we got the bank statement. So in the process of the bank reconciliation, we will have to adjust our books for that. And at the end of the day, we're gonna have to make a journal entry, basically saying, um, we owe, we, we had to reduce our balance with a journal entry, reducing cash with a credit, debiting something like service charges for the fees that the bank has, has put in place for us. And anything else that's on the bank statement, there's a deposit we didn't know about, possibly from a CD or, or an investment that came due, that's now in our bank statement, we'll have to adjust that somehow. We're gonna have to debit the uh, bank account, which would be nice, but then we'll have to credit something else, which is probably going to be something like our investment, an asset that became due, it's gonna have to go down. Uh, if there's if there's an, an error in the checks that happened, if, if the bank says we're supposed to write a check for so much and we wrote it for a different amount, we'll have to make the adjustment related to that information as well. So that's gonna be the bank reconciliation process. Again, summarizing it up, it's gonna be one of our huge internal controls will have over cash, but also uh, an internal control affecting a lot of the other components and cycles within uh, the system. And we're going to be comparing the bank balance to the book balance.